Today, we're gonna to be making these team logo plaques. Using the techniques in this video, you'll be able to make the logo for any team that you could possibly want. We've got to convert the images that we found in the search engine to SVG file. So using convertio.co, there's a link in the description below. Select our file and change the to box to SVG. Then we click convert, wait for the file to convert and then click download. You'll find the file in your downloads folder. The next step is to open Fusion 360. We'll set the profile plane to front and then we'll import our SVG. I've moved my file to a dedicated folder, but yours will still be possibly in the downloads folder. Select the front plane again and flip vertically. Click OK and then finish sketch. Using the middle mouse button, position the SVG and enlarge or reduce the size using the mouse wheel. Select the extrude icon and then left click and drag across the whole SVG. I've chosen 4mm as a distance here, but you can change this according to the dimensions of your SVG. Get our details back, open the sketch menu and click on the eye. We'll choose extrude again and now we'll select the items that make up the team logo, including the name. We are going to leave a couple of the bits around the wheel, there's no need for them in our finished product and you'll see the ones I leave. Here you'll see that I deliberately select the back part of the emblem. If you make a mistake and click something you don't want to, just click it again and it will deselect. Here you can see the arrow is facing to the back, so to extrude forward we will need a minus number in the distance. And you can see the arrow is now facing forward. Choosing new component as the operation will allow us to control the colour of each component in the slicer. That's it, that's us finished in Fusion 360. We can now export out as a step file. I already have a file of the same name that I'm putting in so it will show me a warning, you won't get this. Now we move over to our slicing software check our printer, check our filaments and we're going to make a few changes to the basic 20mm standard settings and then we'll save those. We're going to put one wall on the top surface and one wall on the first layer and we're going to change one wall threshold to zero. This can help stop artifacts when you have small items such as text sitting on a surface. Save your settings choosing a unique name. Now we're going to add our object to the build plane using the plus icon. Auto orientate. I chose to resize it to a width of 100 millimeters, which is four inches and that seemed large enough. It is still 6mm thick and if you wanted to change that thicker or thinner, unchecking uniform scale will allow you just to change the thickness. Moving to the global and object settings, select objects and now we're going to change the component which is the topmost layers. We're going to change the filament colour and there we go. We're ready to slice the plate and then print plate. slice again for some reason it does this occasionally and then we can print the plate choose the filament for the correct colors and then send it click confirm and wait for it to upload once it's sent it will start to print I'm now going to speed through a time-lapse of the 3d print in action Well, that's it. 
I'm particularly pleased with the NYX one. It's the three color version and it's come out really, really well. There is a little mark on it, but that's only due to the printer rather than the actual uh, process. So that's really nice. And as much as I hate saying it, the Arsenal ones come up really lovely too. I'm a Tottenham fan, so that's a bit sickening, but hey. If you would like the files, they're on Makeworld and the links are in the description below. There's some affiliate links with them for other types of filament and the filament I used in this project. If you've got any comments, please leave them in the box below. And I'll do my best to answer them for you. Uh, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Until next time.